everybody, I'm High Priestess Autumn Phoenix. Let me tell you where you can find me on my social media platforms. Find me on Facebook as Magically Blessed. Find me on Instagram at Autumn underscore Phoenix One. Find me on Twitter at Priestess Autumn. Find me on Periscope at Autumn Phoenix. And find me here on YouTube at Autumn Phoenix. Tonight for weekly witch chat is five things that we hate about witchcraft. Now listen, witchcraft is great. Witchcraft brings real change in our lives. Witchcraft is working with the energy found in nature to bring about real change. Witchcraft is using the power that is already in you to bring about that change. Let me tell you something. Spells manifest in our subconsciousness. It manifests in our subconsciousness. For a spell to work, you have to want it badly. And you also have to work hard to do your part to bring about that manifestation in your life. It's true what they say. Faith without works is dead. So the best example of that that I can give you is let's say you have a big test coming up and you're not really sure if you'll pass it or not. You can do a spell to pass that test, but guess what? You still have to study for that test. You have to do your part. Witchcraft will only take you half way. It will not do everything for you. Faith without works is death. So any witch that says, oh, just do this spell and do nothing else, they're lying to you and they are not a witch. You have to do your part. But witchcraft is not always glamorous. There are some things that we don't, as witches, we don't particularly like, and I have five of them tonight. The first thing is not having all of the ingredients for a spell. When we don't have the necessary ingredients for the spell, we might abandon it. We might not do it at all. But what you can do is, you can find an ingredient that works for the same purpose of your spell. You don't have to wait around for this order to come in. You don't have to wait around for Amazon to ship it. You can find a suitable substitute that will still work the same way. The best example of that is when it comes to candles. If the spell you're doing asks for a red candle and you don't have that, you can use a white candle in its place because white and wicker represent all of the um, colors that we use when it comes to candle magic. So when we don't have the ingredients, it's because we have not stocked up the herbs, the essential oils that we need for that spell. But if you do not have all of the exact ingredients, you can use a substitute. If you can't afford an ingredient, you can use a substitute. You don't have to spend hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars on one herb or one essential oils. You know, those little bottles of essential oils can cost up to 40 or 45 dollars. And I'm telling you, when I say they're small, I'm talking about they're tiny. Well, essential oils can be up to 16 ounces. It does, it just depends on how um, committed that witch is or that herbalist is to getting the oil out of those roses, getting the oil out of that lavender. It all depends on how committed the witch is to extract that oil. And if you do not have a particular oil, you can 
use olive oil as a replacement. Olive oil costs how much? $299, $499. On the other hand, essential oils can cost up to $45. So just use the cheaper alternative because it works the same way. And that alternative is olive oil. Or you can use vegetable oil. You don't have to go broke trying to prove to the deities, to the gods, the goddesses that you work with, that you are a committed witch. The goddess, the god does not want you to go broke. They don't want you to have to go to sleep on an empty stomach because you spent $45 for a little ass bottle of essential oil when you could have very easily used olive oil as a replacement. The second thing that witches hate is thinking that our spell manifesting is just a coincidence. No, there is no coincidence when you become a witch and when you start doing witchcraft. There is no coincidences. You do a spell to, let's say you do a spell to attract a lover, right? And you go to the club and immediately two different very sexy men start talking to you start flirting with you you know trying to get that ass you might think is this your spell working or do you just look attractive well yes your spell is working and yes you look attractive no man is going to approach an ugly woman. Okay, let's keep it real here, guys. Maybe that's when you start to think that maybe it's just a coincidence. There are no coincidences anymore when you do that first step. There are none. This kind of negative thinking can really make magic lose its fun. You can't think negative about your own spell. Now, there can be some doubt in your mind that this spell is not going to work. It's normal. But don't doubt your own abilities. Don't doubt what you know. Don't doubt your own powers. Stop that. If you are always doubting yourself and more importantly doubting your spell you're not very likely to keep on trying if you keep doubting yourself you're less likely to continue doing witchcraft and therefore not living a more magically blessed life stop it it's important to keep in mind it's important to remind yourself that you really are working with the universe or deities or your familiar or a particular god or goddess. You actually are. You want to get stuff done. And you don't get stuff done if you are doubting yourself. So stop that. The third thing that a lot of witches hate is when we believe that ancestors and deities are not with us. They go silent. You don't hear shit. If you ever, let me tell you something. If you ever meditate and try to talk with your spiritual partners that you work with when doing witchcraft and don't get anything in return, don't take it personally. They're not mad at you. Let me tell you something about gods and goddesses that a lot of witches, a lot of new witches to the craft don't know. They don't get mad at you. They're not going to punish you. They're not going to release a plague on your family. They're not going to kill the firstborn of your family. They'll be there when you need their help. But listen, the reason why your ancestors or deities that you work with may have gone silent 
is because they know that you can handle your own life without their input, without their help. So don't take it personally. Or in some cases, they may be testing you to see what you are really capable of. Because you know more than you give yourself credit for. You can do more than what you give yourself credit for. Once in a while, you should give yourself a pat on the back. Every once in a while, you should praise yourself. You're smarter than you give yourself credit for. The fourth thing that a lot of witches hate is sleeping with stuff underneath our pillow. Now, you know some witches sleep with crystals or tarot cards underneath their pillow, and that's not always comfortable. Nobody wants to sleep on a big-ass chunk of um, um, clear quartz, rose quartz. Nobody wants to sleep on a rock. Nobody wants to have their tarot cards slip out of the bed and fall behind the bed. And then they have to wake up in the morning and push the bed aside to try to get it back. So witches don't really like sleeping with things underneath their pillow. So, your, your tarot cards, um, a dream spell bag, crystals, and maybe are not comfortable. But here's what you can do though, instead of putting it underneath your pillow and having difficulty going to sleep that night. You can put them on your nightstand table and they will work magically the same way as though you did have them underneath your pillowcase. You can put them on a nightstand table. Don't think, oh, if I do that, my crystals are not going to help me with my dreams. They're not going to give me information. They still will. It's just making you more comfortable while you sleep. You're not going to be able to receive any type of messages if you can't fall asleep. So you can put them on your nightstand. Or you can put like the tarot card that you're using for that night underneath the mattress. You can put the tarot card underneath the pillowcase. I mean inside the pillowcase. But when it comes to crystals, just simply put them on a the nightstand. They are going to work the same way. The fifth thing that witches hate is buying stuff. Because a lot of witches that come out as witches and are ready to do witchcraft, a lot of tools in the craft are very expensive. Now, you know, I'm from New York City. And things are very expensive here. That's why I always tell new witches to stay within their budget. You do not have to have what every other witch has. And the best example of that I can give you is when it comes to your book of shadows. You can simply use a black and white composition notebook. You don't have to go on Amazon and buy a book for $100, $700, $200. $2,000. You don't have to do that. Your book of shadows is still going to work the same way regardless of how fancy it is. A black and white composition notebook is what, 79 cents, 99 cents, $1.29? My book of shadows was $50 off of Amazon when I came out as a witch about 10 or 12 years ago. But I didn't know any better. If I had known that I could just use a black and white composition notebook, I just would have used that. <laughs> so things really do add up when you are a witch. You know, the bills, the credit card bill, the debit cards can really knock you on your ass sometimes. But when it comes to herbs, 
you can find a lot of your herbs in your grocery store. You don't have to actually go to a wood shop and buy, um, like, what can you buy? Um, parsley. You don't have to go to a wood shop to buy, um, any type of herb, especially if you are a kitchen witch. If you're a kitchen witch, everything is found in the grocery store. Stick within your budget. And if you want something and you can't afford it, so what? Just because you can't afford something does not make you a bad witch. You can find a replacement that will work the same way. You don't have to go broke trying to start. And you know that bill is coming this month when you very easily could have used a substitute. Stick within your budget. The God and the goddess would never want you to have to break the bank. A lot of what you need in witchcraft is found in nature. I said earlier, witchcraft is working with the energy found in nature to bring about change. So always, always, always do what is best for you and what is best for your funds. So let me very quickly again tell you where you can find me on social media. Facebook, Magically Blessed. Instagram, Autumn underscore Phoenix One. Twitter, Priestess Autumn. Periscope, Autumn Phoenix. YouTube, at Autumn Phoenix. Uh, did I say Twitter at Priestess Autumn? Well, yeah, Priestess Autumn. So thank you guys for joining me tonight on Weekly with Chat, and I will be speaking to you all shortly. Bye, everybody.